Phil Spencer is a raving lunatic. But you probably already knew that, since his idiotic desire to introduce a cross-platform ban list has been roundly mocked by a near unified internet. At the very least, our side of the internet, there are certain other parts that have been rather defensive, trying to explain exactly what it was he meant when he said that Xbox is not a free speech platform. Incidentally, this is a point that he has actually repeated previously as well. But what's more interesting here isn't this simple lunatic utterance, because, well, let me put it like this. These platforms would already have a very hard time defending in court why they should be allowed to take away property that you have already paid for, like video games or access to their services via their subscription contracts, based only on a loosely defined and incredibly dubiously legal terms of service or end user license agreement. These things, by and large, are not going to be holding up any kind of court of law because you cannot sign away your legal rights. You are simply not allowed to do that. It's one of the few protections that consumers have that are fairly blanket, which is why the various platforms essentially trying to legislate via terms of service and end user license agreements tend to be extremely legally dubious. The problem is, of course, that we don't really care, and this is a double-edged sword. I've talked about this previously with Steam, for example. We're entirely fine with seeing Steam ban cheaters and take away their access to their accounts. We're not going to kick up over much of a fuss about it, and an individual is very unlikely to drag Steam to court over this, though they have been hauled in front of judges on multiple occasions now via class action lawsuits and other things, and they've been losing pretty much every single one of them. Because by and large, the technology company do not operate based upon the law at all, as we have seen with several record sentences levied against Google recently as well, but we're wandering slightly off topic here. The idea of a cross-platform ban list is extraordinarily unlikely. What they would have to do would be to get all of these platforms together and then agree upon a unified terms of service with a point introduced into that toss where it basically says if you violate any of these rules on any of these list 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 platforms then you will be banned on all of those list 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 platforms again however you've got very dubious legality there because well, Steam tries to get around this by saying that you don't own any of your games on Steam. You rent them from their uh, their service. Bullshit. You're paying full price for a product which everyone expects to be yours. And there is no end date on this subscription service. It's nonsensical. But again, we let them get away with it because it gets, uh, gets around a lot of the otherwise legalistic paperwork of moderating a very large community, which on occasion has a very large number of cheaters as well. The problem comes when somebody like this cockwaffle wanders into the conversation and starts making very um, politically biased points. Phil Spencer talks about how Xbox handles online toxicity and data collection, and that point right there as well is one of the keys here. Because Phil Spencer here doesn't really care about online toxicity. We saw the thing um, recently, I did a video about it, where a woman was... somebody said mean things to a woman on the internet. And of course, everyone was outraged. How could this happen? A vagina possessor was on the receiving end of negative comments. We must destroy Xbox immediately. Because clearly, it isn't working as intended. Where literally hours thereafter, highlights of the female streamer in question's own streams, with her acting like a complete toxic douchebag, emerged as well. Whoopsie. Oh, no out outrage there, of course, and the entire story just whoosh, disappeared. <laughs> Weird, I know. Yet, nevertheless, that is what happened. Spencer explained that users signing up and logging into Xbox for the first time are given some questions about data usage, he says, and that they'll be giving a lot of those data to other companies, including various uh, companies that might be making games for them, uh, talking about the gaming habits, etc. This is pretty commonplace these days, but they're tracking a hell of a lot more than that. In fact, about 75% of this is literally just waffle, before moving on to the important point regarding gaming toxicity 
CD. To tackle this where Xbox is concerned, Spencer points out that artificial intelligence helps them out. While well, it exists, I guess. He says that the AI does a good job at highlighting when the conversation is slowly starting to degrade and automated tools flag those messages. And alternatively, there's a report user button, which should be the only thing you'd frankly need. So the AI is already monitoring your conversation, it is already recording it, and it is already checking everything you say. And yet you have Xbox honest promise that they're totally only gathering the relevant data you see. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm absolutely certain about that, because it's not like data is money or anything, of course not. And this leads us to, what did Phil Spencer mean by Xbox is not a free speech platform? Well, exactly what it sounds like he meant when he said that it's not a free speech platform. Namely, that it is a walled garden where he and his friends get to do whatever they want, including monitoring all of your conversations 24-7, which, by the way, they're probably not actually allowed to do, but... Details again. Legality is such a silly thing to care about on the online platforms, after all. Instead, they try to spin this, right? We're not here to allow any conversation to happen on our platforms. Bullshit, as we'll get to in a second, but Spencer said it's very difficult to come to Xbox Live and say, okay, I want to get uh, to go create a political party on the platform. <sighs> it's political part. There is a difference between shaving and cutting off one's head. This is a reductio ad absurdum. No one is going to Xbox and going, right. I think I shall run my entire political campaign from here. It's lunacy. But the point is, you should be able to say things. However, you are not allowed to say certain things, very specific things. As we know that Xbox has a very clear and overtly biased moderation policy when it comes to this. I refer you back to the previous example of the female streamer who acted like an absolute titwink and received absolutely no punishment whilst also being allowed to take other people being assholes to her, deplorable though it may be, place that all over the internet including their screen names and be applauded for it. Ooh, strong independent minded women folk did nothing wrong. Mm. Again, slight double standards there. And we've seen this played for as well. Xbox doubled down on a pledge to focus on diversity so all gamers can play as their authentic selves. Now, we are far past the point where this passes any kind of, of check. This is a politically laden buzzword at this point. Diversity means a very specific thing. We all know what it means. Even the opposition recognizes what it means, which is why this is covered so happily on Pink News. Again, we know what this is. They talk about uh, celebrating Asian American and Pacific Island the Heritage Month, which is there's no problem with that, right? I'm I'm sure if they were celebrating White Heritage Month, that would be accepted. G generally, there would be no outcry, right? No, because again, this is politically charged. This is overtly, again, political. It is a virtue signal. Xbox celebrates International Women's Day. Uh, oddly enough, I don't think there was a Men's Day celebration, nor was there one on Google either. Hm. Weird that. And of course, it all revolves again around the idea of monetization and data, because here's the thing. All of this fluff, all of this virtue signaling is hollow garbage. Something else we know. Because when asked, hey, what are you going to do with Activision Blizzard? You, you partner with them, right? You host their content. Well, you know, they've been accused of all kinds of insane things. I believe they had, um, they had a list here. And say so Xbox mission isn't about isn't about virtue shaming. Oh, you know, no, no, no. Xbox isn't about virtue shaming. We would we would never do that. What well, what was that you said about toxicity there to go? Uh, not being a free speech platform. What was all that? Um, toxicity. You, you can't have that. That's very difficult, and you gotta handle that by gathering more people's data. But you're definitely not about virtue shaming. And, you know, it's it's fine, it's fine. They've been accused of, uh, what was it, rape, uh, oh yeah, here we go, yes. Sexual harassment, assault, uh, gender discrimination lawsuits. Um, I believe they also talked about the uh, the accusations of rape here somewhere again. Ah, yes, a sexual assault against female employee, empl employees, employees, including rape, as well as one report instance of suicide due to sexual harassment. You know... 
that, that's that's pretty severe. But uh, but no no no, we we are not we're not about virtue shaming here. You see, no, of course not. And we can't do anything with this directly. But we're, we're monitoring the situation and we're we're, we're totally uh, keeping an eye on it. You know, it's it's fine. Spencer believes that change requires making workers feel safe by reporting toxic practices by maintaining open lines of communication. We're, we're doing our bit, you see? If whistleblowers pop up at Xbox, we'll totally listen to them. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sure you do. I mean, hell, you might maybe you can even pick up their conversations. You're monitoring everyone else, right? So, um... Maybe? No? It is, it has nothing to do with the virtue scene. These are politically laden terms. They use them because they are, they, they are aware that they are recognized by the group that are currently in power, that are at least perceived to be in power. They are used by the groups of people who can push such accusations against them and have them listened to by a unified mainstream media. It is a shield. They are protecting themselves whilst also realizing, hey, hold on. If we have to deal with online toxicity, we get to record literally everything. Man, that sounds handy, doesn't it? Very, very much so. So, this goes far beyond this crop platform ban. If anything, this this is the distraction. This is the flare shot up to go like, oh, look at this. Look at this. He's, he's talking about cross-platform banning. Something which, see, I was about to say something that will never happen because it's absolute insanity and probably illegal to ban someone from a completely different service that you have no power over because they violated your rules on a different service. But on the other hand, we have seen a steady decline in user rights on the me on the the online media continuing to the point where now various social media platforms are again literally legislating via terms of service determining what you can and cannot say on literally the public marketplace they are the arbiters of what you are allowed to believe and their uh, arbitrations change quickly one day the uh, you know cause, let me let me I'm assume. Some of you have uh, noticed that I'm, uh, I'm I'm forming quite the majestic mullet here. Yes, it's it's starting to grow in quite nicely because for some reason the head at the back of my head seems to grow at three times the speed of anywhere goddamn else, except over the ears, which also grow neatly. So they're nice and warm over my headphones. This is not due to choice. I must. Uh, Fearfully inform you, it is because my country is once again freaking out over the flu. The even more flu than the last time flu. And we've shut down everything and you can't go outside your house unless you're willing to wear your burqa. And as so happens, I'm not particularly fond of the government telling me what I have to wear, so... Screw it, I'm just gonna stay inside and grow long-haired and bearded until the, uh... Snippy snippy stops open up again. Oh, we know we used to have a long and proud tradition of people growing out their hair, though I will remind you, the last time somebody was forced to grow out their hair and swear not to cut it until so and so, uh, that pledge was to conquer Norway and unite it under a single king. Now, I'm not saying that I have any immediate political or monarchical ambitions, but. And again, I hear royalty live uh, pretty nice lives. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.